Hello data friends, my name is Kamil and this is another episode of Microsoft Fabric series on my YouTube channel. Analysis of real-time data streams is a critical capability for any modern data analytics solution. You can use the real-time intelligence capabilities of Microsoft Fabric to ingest, query and process streams of data. Microsoft Fabric provides a runtime that you can use to store and query data by using Custo query language, KQL. Custo is optimized for data that includes a time series component, such as real-time data from log files or IoT devices. So when we open Microsoft Fabric and we'll be on the homepage, if we are not, you can always click uh, in here and click Microsoft Fabric here which brings you to this homepage. So in the homepage, uh, we have all those um, experiences. Um, today, we are interested to look at experience, which is called a real-time intelligence. Uh, you might be uh, a little bit confused because uh, this is a new thing. Uh, this is after Microsoft renamed it from real-time analytics. So now it's called real-time intelligence. So this is the experience that we are looking at today. Okay, so let me click on here. But before I do that, let me make sure that I will be in the, in the correct... Okay, let me click on this and uh, let me make sure that I'm in the correct uh, workspace, that my workspace is this one, MS Learn Fabric, yeah? So I'm clicking this and uh, again, real-time uh, intelligence. So I should be able to create uh, new things in, uh, in here. So I have my workspace created, that's great. Uh, new thing is uh, we want to download um, the uh, CSV file that we will be uh, using to uploading the new data to our database. Okay, but one step um, at a time. Custo query language, TQL, is used to query static or streaming data in a table that is defined in a QQL database. To analyze the sales data, like in this example, you must create a table in QQL database and ingest the data. In this case, in this lesson, we are doing this from file. I saved this file already, so I have it uh, downloaded uh, onto my local uh, computer. So now I will create new QQL database. Okay, let's try to do this. So click new and here we don't see any QQL database. And this is also consequences of what Microsoft uh, done recently. Now we need to select event house. Okay, event house, think about the event house like a server for your QQL databases. Uh, let's click event house and let's create new one. I uh, will call this lab 07 QQL DB and let's click create now. So that would be my QQL database uh, with uh, in my uh, new, completely new event house. So let's click get started here. And here you have few uh, guidance, guidance uh, like, okay, starting by adding. So here we can uh, click and get some data, which uh, we'll do in, in, a, in a seconds. Let's have a look on the next one. Yeah, we need to add more database to our kind of server or event house. Now what we can do, we can see you know, what is the size of each uh, database or um, yeah, or each database in our event uh, event house and also or what what is happening, what kind of resources are uh, utilized uh, and etc. Of course, we don't see anything right now, but you will see this later. Uh, and yeah, what the, the, the actions uh, uh, happens in the event house, uh, who created what, who changed the table, who created the table and etc. and etc. All the things related to the audit, uh, to auditing um, the things. Yeah, let's click OK. And now uh, let's load the first data. So let's get the data. And in this case, we are going to load the data directly from 
a local um, a machine, uh, so it will be local file name. Okay, and here I'm clicking this new table. It will be sales. Okay, and I can drag files here, or I can just click this browse for files. In my case, the files are here, exactly one file actually. So I'm clicking this. As you can see, this is CSV file, but it's not uh, stopping us to load this CSV file directly from this wizard. Yeah. So when I click next, the application automatically recognizes that this is CSV and read this file. Yeah, showing me what is in the columns. As you can see, it's pretty well recognized with the small exception here that actually the first record is the column names. First line is the column names. But we have the option here, first row as a column header. So if you switch this on, you see that now we have appropriate column names and the first uh, line, first record is actually the data. Fine, this looks good. We can click finish now and the table, the data is loading, is being loaded to the, uh, to the database. Now we can close this. So you see that we have some data right now, original size, uh, almost four and a half megabytes, but data in the QQL database are very well compressed. So as you can see, the compression ratio is almost five, which gives us uh, less than 900 kilobytes in the physical storage. That's great. We have the data in the database. What we can do now, we can query those data. Now we can click on the database here, but before I do that, I will click refresh to just see the new table. Uh, I have my new table says, and now here I can click and get query, get sorry, get data, or I can click the query table. And there's a few predefined queries uh, for me. Uh, for now, I will click show any 100 records, and this will open new window for us. Okay, so as you can see, this is giving me 100 records from the table. Now I'm going to change this query. Uh, before I do that, I will show you something on the top that here you have also some um, QQL reference guide. So this QQL, this is the language that uh, you are using for uh, querying the data in the QQL database. QQL is uh, a custo query language. So something, hmm, no, I wouldn't say that it's similar to the CQL, uh, but kind of. Uh, if you want to learn more, click one of those links or both of them and learn more. But in this lesson, I will show you a few examples. So let's remove this one for now. And yeah, this is the simple one. When we run this, we get uh, first uh, or any 100 records. Now let's change this and give and put one condition. Okay, so as in uh, like in SQL language, we have a uh, clause, uh, clause like where, uh, where we can define um, uh, some conditions. In this uh, example, I would like to filter records by item name. And let's filter because I know that that kind of records exist. So it should be um, like that. So let's click now run. And now we have only the item with this name. Okay. So you see also how quickly the data is received. Of course, this database is uh, very, very small, but you can believe me, even if we have billions of records, the database will be still very fast and the query execution uh, will receive uh, the data very quickly because this is how the database is optimized here. Okay, let's uh, expand this, uh, allowing uh, adding uh, additional uh, condition here. So let's use this time uh, function like date time part. I would like to use and um, yeah, filter data by year only from order date. As you can see, IntelliSense works here uh, very nicely. So I would like to filter by year everything what is bigger or greater than 2020. Okay, let's run this. So you can see uh, again, 
0 0.06 uh, three seconds and we've got uh, 144 records filtered by uh, two columns actually eh? and the, and this one as you uh, can see mm, normally in the SQL kind of database or relational database if you don't have that kind of specific um, index uh, this uh, query, that kind of query, uh, won't be that efficient. Yeah. Of course, again, we are working on the small database, but in the uh, future videos, I will show you how performant this QQL database uh, is or can be. Okay, let's uh, add or modify this uh, query. Uh, now, uh, let me copy paste um, another query here. And again, we are asking sales database, sorry, sales table. And we're using where here, order date between um, this date and this date. As you can see, it's a little bit different uh, comparing to SQL language, where normally we would have end here and uh, summarize uh, it's something like group by in sql uh, summarize total net revenue uh, by unit price uh, by item okay so we'll be uh, grouping by item and um, summarizing unit price and naming this as a total net revenue and sort by item okay let's run this query Oops, something happened here. What I done? Ah, I think, yes, sales should be like this. Uh, as you see, sales is the name of the table and sales must be from uh, uppercase because the uh, uh, query uh, engine is uh, case sensitive here. So I had to be careful how I'm naming uh, objects. Okay, let me run this. And now we have our result. We actually can expand every single record if we want. Yeah, so which is very, uh, very uh, useful and helpful. Great, fantastic. We have this query. We know how to write uh, the uh, query um, in the QQL language. So let's save this as a QQL query set now. Why I'm showing you? this because we will use this uh, query set, uh, QQL query set later in our Power BI report. So let's run, let's name it revenue by product and create or save. We can use our QQL query set as a basis for a Power BI report. Now we have our query uh, saved and um, now we can create actually new report so let's click this build power bi report and now we see on the right in the data pane that we have our our qsto query result which contains two columns yeah as we saw in our result of the query so now let's select both columns and our data will be here let's change the visualization to the clustered bar chart and this is what we've got uh, as a result of our QQL uh, query. Fantastic. We have our first Power BI report created directly from uh, Custo database. We can save this report now, naming it revenue by item in this workspace. And now we have our Power BI report uh, already saved. Thanks for watching this video. This video was only introduction to real-time intelligence, even house and QQL queries. In the future videos, we will learn how to ingest data from real-time sources and create biggest database. So stay tuned. Let me know in the comments below if you have any concern or questions. Uh, I will try my best to answer them. Is there any particular topic you would like to learn? Let me know in the comments as well. If you want to learn more about Microsoft Fabric, visit Microsoft Fabric community website, which is phenomenal knowledge hub uh, for this product. I'm recording this video in my spare time, so if you appreciate the result, be generous, give me a thumb up and subscribe the channel. I will very much appreciate that. And in the meantime, have a fantastic day and see you next time. Bye bye.